for taking the time with us, Prof. We're still waiting for the attendee to come in. My pleasure. Uh, can I ask for a favor? My first name has been out here, Wang. Uh, what is it, Prof? Uh, my first name has been spelled out here wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Is it possible uh, to get it fixed? I uh, think so, yes. Uh, Pak Farid. Yeah. Uh, Nyun namanya Prof. Meisam itu M, bukan N, Pak. M-E-I-S-A-M. And T-A-B-A-T-A-B-A-E-I. Both of them are wrong. Be confused with the first picture. name and yeah. last and name. It's our, but it's our our. Uh, saya WA ya, Pak Farid. Okay. Uh, yeah. Saya harus buka Zoom lagi soalnya. Oh, yeah. To the future generations, we are deeply sorry about that. So many beautiful things that we have now, and all good things that nature has granted to us that you won't be able to have, to see, you won't be able to touch, Sorry, we have polluted your air for a long time. Sorry for our production and consumption habit bring damage to your earth. Sorry that we can't stop ruining the oceans, the forests, and the soil. Sorry for the carbon dioxide we kept releasing. We see the signs. But we decide to do something else in the name of civilization. We forget what's good of that if there will be no future. No such thing what to call a civilization. We are sorry for stealing your future. Above all, we are sorry that the whole world can do enough to give you a beautiful and safe planet that you can call home. We feel on our responsibility, but you can still save your future for your children. I give you the seeds, plant them one by one until it clear your air. Your atmosphere restore the climate. Dear children of the future, you can still save the earth. Don't wait, act now. And once again, we are deeply sorry. Do not repeat our mistake. Erlangga University is one of the best college in Eastern Indonesia. It is located in the Surabaya city. One of the best faculty it has is the Faculty of Public Health. The Faculty of Public Health of Erlangga University has seven departments and nine study programs at bachelor, master, and doctoral level. The Faculty of Public Health also has a Bachelor of Public Health study program at the UNIR Banyuwangi campus. The Faculty of Public Health continues to show remarkable achievements as evidenced by its study programs that have been accredited a by the Lampeticus and an undergraduate curriculum in public health that has been internationally validated by APEA, the Agency for
for Public Health Education Accreditation. As one of the pioneers of public health education in Indonesia, the Faculty of Public Health at Langa University also encourages its students to be proactive and professional with entrepreneurial skill to solve public health problems at the local, national, and international level based on technological development and based on religious moral. There are seven departments at Erlanga University's Faculty of Public Health, including Department of Health Policy and Administration, Department of Biostatistics and Demography, Department of Epidemiology, Department of Nutrition, Department of Environmental Health, Department of Occupational Health and Safety, Department of Health Promotion and Behavioral Science. From seven departments, the Faculty of Public Health has nine study programs, including Bachelor's Degree Program on Public Health, Bachelor's Degree Program on Nutrition, Bachelor's Degree Program of Public Health at Satellite Campus in Banyuwangi, Master's Degree Program on Public Health, Master's Degree Program on Health Policy and Administration, Master's Degree Program on Occupational Health and Safety, Master's Degree Program on Environmental Health, Master's Degree Programs on Epidemiology, Doctoral Program on Public Health, In addition to academic activities, students of Public Health Faculty are also active in the non-academic activities, such as Choir Basketball Club Dance Club Traditional Dance Club Music Club Community Service and other students' activities Faculty of Public Health Erlanga University has various facilities to support the students' academic activities, such as Computer Lab, Epidemiology Lab, Health Nutrition Lab, Audio Visual Aid Lab, Environmental Lab as well as Occupational Health and Safety Lab. Fakultas Kesehatan Masyarakat dengan bangga sudah banyak memproduksi karya-karya ilmiah secara internasional, jurnal-jurnal ilmiah, penelitian kerjasama dengan institusi di internasional dan ini merupakan suatu capaian yang luar biasa yang dilaksanakan oleh dosen, mahasiswa, masyarakat, dan stakeholder bekerja sama dengan komitmen yang sama untuk branding internasional. Fakultas Kesehatan Masyarakat bersinergi untuk mewujudkan World Class University. Wujudkan prestasi dan cita-citamu bersama Fakultas Kesehatan Masyarakat Universitas Airlangga.
My name is Jean-Jacques. I'm from Madagascar, and I'm a student here. I'm taking my PhD in, in social science at Erlanga University. And one of the reasons why I decided to choose Erlanga, first off, the facility itself, for example, like uh, hospitals, you know, for example, like at each campus, because there are three campuses, A, B, and C, and each campus has its own clinic, and it's really facilitating us for if we are sick. And also other uh, facilities, for example, like the library itself, like this place, it's really great because for us students, like especially for taking a PhD, it's really hard, so we have to have, you know, access for, for example, like information technology where it allows us for e-journals. Those are all those resources really available in Erlang University. So I'm really lucky that I have chosen this university. And second off, because of the environment itself. It's really cool, it's a really green campus, and there's, there's no pollution at all, and all the people are really friendly. And the students, like my classmates, and also like there's availability of canteen and everywhere. Like you're so glad that I chose this university. Hello everybody, I am Shah Faisal from Pakistan and I am here studying Master of Community Pharmacy in Faculties Pharmacy in University of Erlanga. The university is based on international standards. Every facility at international institutes needs the university has all these facilities like experience talk, cooperative administration, internet facilities, a uh, flash bus for transportation, uh, sporting events, playgrounds, uh, every faculty has a, has a special library regarding the books, a variety of books you can study, uh, the parking, the cafeterias. Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullah. My name is Ali Raza. I'm a doctoral student of economics in the University of Erlanga. As a research student, there is a research center for doctoral students, which is called Posar Data or Data Center. It's helped about you, uh, to you about any research type. If you have any difficulty about research, they provide you any type of data and writing facilities and how to write for a good job. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Monetaritas Erlangga, with our motto, Excellent with Morality, is determined to produce graduates, researchers, or academics who are not only excellent in their expertise but also have a great function for people and good significant contribution in improving the welfare of the society. As a public university, Universitas Elangga is committed to build and strengthen collaboration with institutions around the world through academic activities, research and community services. Therefore, I would like to invite you all to work together with us through academic partnership for serving all communities. I look forward to welcoming you in Universe Elanga in the near future. Thank you. Hi, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi. Good morning ladies and Good morning ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ernie. It's precious chain for me to be your master of ceremony on this very special occasion. The Lancet Countdown event in Indonesia tracking progress on health climate change talk show. The honorable Muhammad Miftahu Surur, Dr. Mkes, SPPD, PhD, as Vice Rector for Internationalization, Digitalization, and Information. The Honorable Dr. Santi Martini, Dr. Mkes, as the Dean of Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Erlangga. The Honorable Dr. Alice Magazine from Lancet Condon Representative. First of all, let's say thanks to God who has given us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, so we can attend and participate in this special event without any obstacles. This activity is collaboration among Faculty of Public Health Universitas Erlangga and the Lancet Condon Organization. I would like to welcome our speakers today and all of the audience. Our speaker are Dr. Zhao Liu from Tsinghua University. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, Associate Professor Meizam Tabata Bay from University Malaysia Trengganu. Welcome. And Dr. R. Aziza yeah. Mkes from yeah. Faculty of Public Health Universitas Erlangga. And the last speaker is Dr. Trias Mahmudiono, PhD, from Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Erlangga. On this special morning, we have a several agenda as follows. Opening remark and welcoming speech and presentation. We have a four section in this presentation, Q&A, and the last is closing. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before the event started, we will sing Indonesia National Anthem. Please, uh, to audience, stand up. Indonesia, Tanah Airku, Tanah Tumpah. 
Oke, okay. uh, please be seated. Oke, okay. uh, well ladies and gentlemen, uh, move on to the next agenda is opening remark uh, from Universitas Erlangga representatif Vice Rector for Internationalization, Digitalization and Information to Mr. Muhammad Miftahu Surur, Dr. M. Kes, SPBD, PhD, time is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah wa syukurillah wa la haula wa la quwwata illa billah wa ma shalli ala sayidina Muhammad wa ali sayidina Muhammad. Praise to be, of, be to Allah to Almighty which give us the opportunity to meet and gather here for the Lancet countdown event in Indonesia. Tracking progress on health and climate changes talk so in good health. I would like to express my gratitude to Faculty of Public Health Universitas Erlangga for organizing this event as a part of the launching of Lancet Countdown Report 2020, which is about the result, research results from the global academic on climate change. We are grateful through Faculty of Public Health UNER can work together with Lancet Countdown holding this webinar to address the global issue. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Dean of the Faculty of Public Health. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have noticed that climate change happening in almost every region is closely related to the global warming. And there are various reasons and impacts leading to the global state we are in today. Therefore, we really hope that this event be a part of bringing academic institution together to track how climate change is affecting health across the continent, how countries are responding and the health benefits of an accelerated response. And not only affecting health, climate change also brings impact to other sectors. As recorded in the first Lancet Countdown China's report, 77 world experts from 19 institutions have seen more than 23 indicators of health and climate change at national, regional, and provincial level have illustrated the great impact, impact of climate change. And from all this data, we understand that public health could be a way for the governments in addressing climate change issue. Therefore, this activity is expected to give directions to the policy markers so they could gain access to the high quality proof-based information. So they could provide the tools needed by the professionals to improve the public health. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my thanks to all speakers and participants from Indonesia and other parts of the world. May all of your contributions in the seminar regarded as good deeds and all expectations for this event fulfilled. Have a great event and continue success. Pilihi Taufik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam Thank you, Dr. Mita, for the speech. Okay, the next is welcome speech from Lancet Countdown representative to Dr. Alice Magazin. Time is yours. Thank you very much for inviting me to give these opening remarks at this important event, the inaugural Indonesian event, launch event of the Lancet Countdown Report, hosted by Universitas Erlanga, Faculty of Public Health. Thank you to Dr. Trias for organizing this event and to Dr. Santi Martini for first linking the Lancet Countdown with Universitas Erlanga. I'm Dr. Alice Mugushan and I'm the program manager of the Lancet Countdown. The Lancet Countdown is an international multidisciplinary collaboration of some 120 scientists, engineers, mathematic modelers, economists, 
energy, transport and agriculture experts, social and political scientists, and health professionals from some 38 institutions from around the world. This collaboration first formed in 2013 and has been publishing its findings annually in The Lancet since 2015. The timing of today's event is crucial. While this year has been dominated by the devastating pandemic, tomorrow marks the five year anniversary of the adoption of the Paris Agreement. I was there in the room at the climate change conference in Paris on that fateful day. A few weeks ago, the next annual conference of parties, COP26, was supposed to take, have taken place in Glasgow. However, this has been delayed to November 2021. But a delay in our meeting cannot mean a delay in our response to the health effects of climate change. And this year's report, we focus on our message on the joint response of the converging crises of climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. This morning, you have an excellent lineup of speakers with Professor May Sam and Dr. Zhao, two of the Lancet Countdown's authors, and Dr. Aziza and Dr. Trias from Universitas Elanga, Faculty of Public Health. I hope that this event in informs you and inspires you to take action on the health effects of climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Dr. Alice, for the speech. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, attention. The participant will remain there to turn off the mic or must be in mute mode during the presentation was in the progress. In the of the section, all of the participants must fill out evaluation form as a requirement for getting an A certificate. Okay, and uh, now please welcome our moderator, Miss Clara. Uh, she is a student from Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Alenga. She has uh, so many achievements in academic and non-academic field. I will uh, share the CV. Okay, uh, yes, Miss Clara Chahyaningvisesa. She graduated from Senior High School Al Hikmah Surabaya, and she has uh, experience in so many other uh, competence in English and Indonesian, and also she has. Uh, competent in computer literacy. Okay, uh, to Miss Clara, uh, for the next agenda, I will leave it to you as a moderator. Thank you, Mrs. Ernie, and good morning, everyone. I am Clara, and for now, I will lead the first and second talk show session. Uh, the first panelist would be Professor Mason Tabatabe, an associate professor of environmental biotechnology in University Malaysia Terengganu. And excuse me, I will share his curriculum vitae. Since 2016, Professor Tabate has been the lead collaborator of the Lancet Commission on Public Health and Climate Change. And he has been listed on the web of science highly cited researchers list as one of the top 1% scientists in the world in engineering category since 2017. 
and for the participants. Should you have any questions, you can write it in the Q&A section below. And if you have any problem to write it in English, you can write it in Bahasa and we'll try our best to translate it in English. Thank you. And without further ado, let's welcome Professor Tabate. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have the opportunity to be with you today. I would like to thank uh, University of Erlanga, Indonesia, for hosting this event, and uh, Professor uh, Trias, in, in particular, uh, for chairing it. So, uh, without any further delay, I would like to move to the main highlights of the Lancet Countdown 2020 report. I assume you have my slides on? All yes. Right. Uh, All yeah. right. So the title of the 2020 report uh, is uh, responding the, the particular, the, the specific title is responding to converging crisis. And uh, throughout this presentation, I'm going to walk you through the main findings of the 2020 report as my uh, colleague, Dr. Alice mentioned, uh, published a few days ago in the journal The Lancet, which is arguably the most prestigious journal in the domain of public health. All right. So as also mentioned by Dr. Alice, so this is a collaboration of 38 universities, research institution and United Nations subsidiaries, including WHO, uh, and the work of 120 scientists uh, through monitoring 43 indicators annually and reporting on the progress of these indicators every year uh, in, in the journal The Lancet. This year, uh, we have some new indicators, uh, including heat-related mortality, uh, migration and population displacement, access to urban green space, uh, the health benefits of low-carbon diets, the economic cost of extreme uh, extremes of heat and of labor capacity loss, net carbon pricing, the extent to which the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change uh, engage with public health. So I'm going to present to you some of the uh, main findings of some of the indicators I have picked and uh, some others are going to be uh, briefed to you by my colleague and co-author, uh, Dr. Zhao Liu. All right, next please. All right, so these are the main uh, and key findings, the, head, uh, the headline findings of the Lancet countdown. So previous slide, please, yep. Yep, previous one, please. Okay, so yeah, one more, you just go ahead, go ahead. No, forward, please. Okay, one more. All right. So, uh, no, one, please go back one slide. Go back one slide, yeah. one more. Okay, stop here. So based on the findings of the 2020, 2020 report, uh, we believe that no country is immune from the health impacts of climate change. People all around the world face increasing extremes of heat, extremes of heat, food and uh, water insecurity, and changing patterns of infectious disease. And this is happening right now and everywhere. Unless urgent action is taken, the health impacts of climate change will increasingly threaten lives and livelihoods and compromise the hospitals and clinics we depend on very badly. The pandemic has, pro has provided a glimpse of this future that we might be facing if we don't intervene today. Next, please. The second key message is that this year, uh, this year is wildfire and tropical storms have tragically shown us that we don't have the luxury of tackling one crisis at a time. 
So we strongly believe that the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change represent converging crises. At the same time, climate change and zoonotic pandemics share common drivers. So responding to climate change today will bring about cleaner skies, healthier diets, and safer places to live, as well as reduce the risk factors of future infectious disease. Next, please. And the third, uh, uh, the third key message is that aligning the global recovery from COVID-19 with our response to climate change offers a triple win. Improving public health, creating a sustainable economy and protecting the environment. But time is really short for all of us. Failure to tackle these converging crises in tandem would move the world 1.0 degree Celsius target out of reach, da uh, damaging the health of the world's 7.8 billion citizens in the short and long term. Next, please. All right, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Zhao Liu, is going to uh, explain about our main findings on heat waves and the fact that the global temperature is increasing. So I have excluded those parts from my presentation. Uh, but heat waves, and when it's hot around you and the temperature is increasing, we are more vulnerable to wildfires. Our finding uh, reflect that in 114 countries, there was an increase in the number of days people were exposed to very high or extremely high risk of danger from fires in the year, in the, in the period 2016 to 2019 compared to the baseline 2001, 2004. This increased risk translated into an increase in population exposure to wildfire. And I'm sure this is uh, not strange to you. We have been witnessing and following the news on wildfire in the United States, in Australia. And if we don't, if we don't take care of climate change or embedded war mitigated as much as possible, we are going to see increased frequency of wildfire uh, putting at risk uh, the lives of uh, many people, and in particular, the frontliners in domain, firefighters. Next, please. All right, climate change has also been very uh, strongly associated with increased prevalence of floods and drought. And this is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very disproportionate. Uh, in some parts of the world, we are seeing better days, while in some parts of the world, we are, we are, we are witnessing or experiencing much drier days compared with uh, many years ago. In 2018, the global land surface area affected by excess drought was more than twice that of historical baseline. And uh, in some parts of the world, we are experiencing uh, more frequency or prevalence of floods. And as I'm talking to you right now in Terengganu, uh, it's been flooded in many parts of the town, unfortunately. Next one, please. Apart from that, uh, as shown by this indicator, the lethality of extreme weather events are uh, also increasing. From 1990 to 2019, uh, the, the long-term increasing trend in the number of weather-related disasters were accompanied by increase in the number of people affected by these disasters in countries where healthcare expenditure had reduced or had minimally increased during the years 2000 to 2017. So unfortunately, the lethality of extreme weather events potentially caused by climate change is also elevating. Next one, please. All right, climate change has multi, uh, multi aspects and it impacts our life in different ways. Another consequence of climate change is that uh, the, the climate is more suitable for infectious disease transmission. And it's, it's in a way undoing the improvement we have made in the health sector. Changing climate conditions are increasingly suitable for transmission of numerous infectious diseases. From the 1950 baseline to 2018, the global climate suitability for transmission of dengue has increased by 8.9 percent a disease which is very popular, I mean, familiar in, in Southeast Asian region and still 
uh, claiming many deaths every year. Uh, for Aedes aegypti, 8.9% increase in transmission and 15% for Aedes uh, albopictus, uh, uh, albopi albopictus in 2019 to 2000, 2015 to 2019, suitability for malaria transmission in highland area was 38.7% higher in African region and around 150% higher in the Western Pacific region compared uh, with the uh, 1950 baseline. So as you can see here, the global suitability for infectious disease is, or transmission of infectious disease is increasing substantially as a result of climate change. Next one, please. All right, and vulnerability to mosquito-borne disease. So we have been trying very hard, the global community has been trying very hard to control mosquito borne disease, and we have been to some extent successful. But unfortunately, over the period 2016 to 2018, we have experienced a small uptick in national vulner vulnerability to dengue outbreaks in four of six WHO regions. We are going to keep monitoring these data in the years to come to further establish the impacts of climate change on this indicator. Next one, please. Okay, and I think this is of particular interest to your faculty and to your university as I believe uh, food security is one of uh, the main uh, focus of uh, uh, your university and faculty. So terrestrial food security and undernutrition. So food security has been compromised to some extent by climate change. And this trend is unfortunately going to continue from the year 1981 to 2019, crop yield potential for maize, for winter wheat, for soybean and rice has, has followed a consistently downward trend with the reductions relative to baseline, uh, to, to baseline of 5.6 for maize, 2.1% for winter wheat, 4.8% for soybean, and 1.8% for rice. So, Crop yield is declining as a result of climate change. And so uh, food security is being compromised uh, as a consequence. Next, please. It does not stop in land. Marine food security is also being threatened by climate change. As a result of global warming and sea surface temperature increase, coral reefs are being impacted substantially. We have seen many of the reefs major lift in Southeast Asian region already bleached. Uh, coral reef being stressed and bleached. Uh, th th these are the nurseries of the oceans. So fish population decline as a result. So fish catch decline as a result. And then we have to uh, be inclined toward inland production of fish. Uh, and the fish produced in farms cannot match the quality of the fish caught in oceans and seas, because of, in particular because of omega-3 content. So we are more vulnerable to disease uh, attributed to low omega-3 content. We have monitored sea surface temperature in 64 countries, and we have come to the conclusion that 46 countries have experienced increase in sea surface temperature in the territorial waters between the years 2015-2019 compared to the baseline 2003-2007. So we believe that further bleaching of the coral reefs will uh, substantially impact uh, fish uh, production or primary productivity of the oceans and uh, marine-based food security. Next one, please. All right, and this indicator is all about migration, displacement, and rising sea, rising sea uh, levels. So this indicator uh, monitor the impacts of climate change on uh, migration. If we believe, if we would, would not, if we would not interfere, uh, if we would not intervene rather in uh, climate change, if we don't try to mitigate between 140 million people and 565 million people living in coastal areas today, 
will be exposed to and affected by rising sea levels in the future between one meter to five meter. All right, next, please. Okay, so let's move to another uh, working group or the indicators of another working group. Uh, we believe that given the magnitude of the impacts of climate change, every country and every city should conduct uh, climate change risk assessment and should come up with adaptation plan and should allocate the necessary funds to implement the adaptation plan uh, design based on the climate change risk assessment. In 2019, uh, 605 uh, of 789 global cities surveyed had either already completed or were uh, currently undertaking climate change risk assessment. 77% of the cities uh, surveyed. And 67 of uh, 814 uh, cities expecting climate change to seriously compromise the public health assets and services. That is a substantial increase compared to the data extracted in 2018. So if we won't intervene, so we are going to see our uh, public health system being compromised as a result of the impacts of climate change. Next one, please. All right, so the result of all these uh, you know, unfavorable consequences of climate change is basically the greenhouse gas we emit uh, on daily basis and as a result of fossil fuel consumption. Uh, electricity generation and energy production system is the main culprit, and we are highly dependent on coal uh, consumption, as you can see in this slide. I'm afraid as much as we have tried to improve our renewable energy capacity, but the carbon intensity of the global primary energy production or supply has remained flat over the three, over the last three decades. So as you can see here, coal, is, coal still dominates our uh, source of energy uh, here, and it continues to dominate as you can see here. And we hope that in the years to come by enhancing our renewable energy capacity and by phasing out coal, we'll be able to uh, get around this trend and uh, change it. All right, next one, please. So as I was talking about coal in 2018, global energy supply from coal stood at uh, stood 1.2% higher than in 2017. And it, that was 74% higher than in 1990. So as you can see here, uh, global energy supply is uh, heavily dependent on coal and coal is a main culprit in uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emission and in terms of air pollutant. Next, please. All right, the fossil fuel are not just about the emission of greenhouse gas emission. They're also the main origin of ambient air pollution. As you can see here, the premature death from ambient PM25 uh, attributed to coal use are rapidly declining, falling from 440,000 deaths in 2015 to 390,000 deaths in 2018. However, total deaths from ambient PM2.5 uh, have increased slightly during this time period from 2.95 million deaths in 2013 to just over 3 million deaths in 2018, highlighting the need for an accelerated intervention and for uh, moving toward a uh, zero carbon or net zero uh, energy production system, uh, net zero transportation system, enhancing our renewable energy capacity, phasing out coal, limiting our uh, exploitation of fossil fuel reserves, etc. Next, please. All right, and emissions from agriculture production and consumption. Red meat here is the main culprit, and in particular, ruminant livestock continue to dominate agricultural agriculture's contribution to climate change and are responsible for 56% of total agricultural emission and 93% of all livestock emissions globally. The proportion represents 
a five-point uh, person increase in the per capita emission from beef consumption between the year 2000 and 2017, which is particularly concerning given the sharp rise in population during this time uh, and the health impacts of excess red meat consumption. So red meat production is uh, the main contributor to, uh, to, to greenhouse gas emission globally. So moving toward less uh, red meat dependent diet would uh, help uh, intervening uh, or mitigating climate change. Next, please. So, and it's not, uh, so reducing uh, red meat consumption, production and consumption is not only favorable to climate change, but it comes with health uh, uh, co-benefits. The global number of deaths due to excess red meat consumption rose to uh, close to 1 million deaths in 2017, a 72% increase since the 1990 baseline. So that emphasizes the importance of moving toward less red meat dependent diet, both from climate change perspective and health co-benefits. Next, please. All right, and now let's get to the economic losses due to climate related extreme events. So in 2019, economic losses from climate related extreme events were nearly five times greater in low income countries or economies than in high income economies. Just 4% of these losses were unfortunately insured in low income uh, economies compared to 60% in high income economies. So this slide simply present to you that uh, the economic loss of climate change related or climate related extreme events taking place in low income economies where there is little insurance and most of these events are not insured. So it's very important for low income economies to be more demanding in, in national communities because they are bearing a major burden of the uh, consequences of climate change. Next, please. And sometime many people say that mitigating climate change is costly. It could be otherwise. Cost of uh, the, the benefit of health impacts or health impacts of uh, uh, the benefits of health improvement as a result of mitigating climate change or reducing, uh, reducing greenhouse gas emission and reducing uh, ambient air pollution could be substantial. By improving, by improving uh, or by reducing PM 2.5 pollution in Europe, for example, between 2015 and 2018, uh, $8.8 .8 billion were saved uh, as a result of these mitigation strategies or these, uh, or these intervention, if you like. So if we try to mitigate climate change, if we try to address it, if we try to intervene, we are going to, uh, and if we improve, uh, our response to climate change by reducing fossil fuel consumption, for example. So we, are, we reduce greenhouse gas on one, hand, on one side and we reduce uh, air pollutant on the other side. So we, we, we bring about health improvements and this, that will be translated into uh, savings in the health sector. All right, next please. Excuse me, Professor, uh, you have five minutes left. Thank you so much. All right. So, this slide is particularly, particularly beautiful. Uh, and we have been monitoring this over the last few years. So this is based on the clicks in Wikipedia showing the, uh, the individuals trying to search these two domains, uh, public health and climate change or health and climate change. So as we have been experiencing, so you see the, here the, the, uh, inter, the intersection is, is very narrow. So what we would like to see is to see more uh, uh, a, a wider, a stronger intersection between, between health and climate change. Individual information seeking about health and climate change increased by 24% from the year 2018 to 2018. And that's very interesting. So we would like to see more uh, a, a higher magnitude of increase uh, 
of, uh, uh, of, of this intersection between health and climate change in the years to come. All right, next. Thank you. So the coverage of health and climate change in scientific journal has also experienced a very sharp increase between the years 2007 and 2018. Original research on health and climate change increased by a factor of eight, interestingly, a trend driven by research scientists in high income countries. So we we, that's, that's very inspiring because it shows that the, in, the, the relationship between health and climate change is being realized uh, progressively by scientists all around the world. And this should be also realized by scientists in low income countries, hopefully in, in the future, in very near future. All right, next. All right, and government engagement in health and climate change is uh, also experiencing uh, a, an increasing trend. National governments are increasingly paying attention to health and climate change. And this initiative is uh, mainly driven by small island developing states, which are most vulnerable to climate change and increasing sea level. Uh, sea level. And they are leading this trend at the United General Debate. And uh, poor, as I said, uh, we have uh, witnessed uh, we have witnessed an increasing trend of these debates by these governments at the UN uh, UN General Assembly and uh, the other events organized. All right, next, please. So, and here you can see that in the corporate sector engagement in health and climate change is also enhancing. In 2019, engagement in health and climate change increased to 24% among healthcare companies in the UN Global Compact. Although this engagement uh, con uh, continues to lag behind uh, that of other sectors, but still promising. All right, next. All right, here I have brought to you again the three uh, main findings uh, or key findings of the 2020 report as my last slide. So I read through just as a take home message, no economy is immune uh, from the health impacts of climate change. Unless urgent action is taken, the health impacts of climate change will increasingly threaten lives and livelihoods and compromise the hospital and clinic we depend on. Second, the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change represent converging crises. We don't have, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of tackling one crisis at a time. We have to address them together concurrently. And finally, aligning the global recovery from COVID-19 with our response to climate change offer a triple win, improve health, uh, public health, create a sustainable economy and protect the environment. All right. And with this, I would like to end my presentation. I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to the organizing committee and all the team. Thank you so much for the honor and opportunity given to me to be with you today. Thank you, Professor, for the insightful presentation. And from the presentation, we can conclude that no country is immune from the health impacts of climate change, and it doesn't affect just our health, but every aspect of our life. Next, uh, we have the second panelist, and that would be Dr. Chiao Liu from Tsinghua University. Dr. Chao Liu is a research associate in Department of Earth System Science in Tsinghua University, and she's also a research fellow in Landsat Countdown Regional Center for Asia. Her research interests are global climate change and extreme high temperature, global and regional heat health risk assessment, social vulnerability of public health in urban area. And Dr. Zhao Liu has her bachelor study in geography information system at East China Normal University and her master in cartography and geography information system and a visiting scholar in Boston University. And she has her PhD in natural disaster in Beijing Normal University. 
Again, I would like to remind the participants that should you have any questions, you can write it in the Q&A section below. And if you have any trouble to write it in English, you can write it in Bahasa and we'll try our best to translate it in English. Thank you. And without further ado, Dr. Chow Yu, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. May I share the screen by myself? Yes, please. Okay. Um, this one. Okay, can you see the, <clears throat> the slides? Can you see my screen? Yes, nice. Yes, nice. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. I'm Zhao Liu from Tsinghua University, uh, and I also work for the Lancet Kangjiang Asia Center. Thanks for the invitation from Erlanga University, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I'm honored to have the chance to give a small talk about our findings in the uh, in this year's Countdown Report to and uh, to introduce our Asia Center to you, um, Professor. Mason has introduced our main findings and the part of the indicators, and I will introduce some uh, heat related indicators next. So today, my topic is about climate change and uh, uh, heat related health risks. Uh, here, I listed some facts on, on how heat affects health. The figure in the right is the anomalous temperature map for European, Europe in 2019, in which the highest is uh, 9 degrees. So the first fact is that heat is a major health risk. Exposure to excessive heat presents wide ranging health risks. It can amplify existing conditions and result in premature death, uh, disability, illness, uh, including acceleration of non-communicable diseases and the effect of air pollution. Second, uh, heat kills. Heat stri stress is a leading cause of weather-related death. In 2003, uh, 70,000 people in Europe died as a result of the June to August heat wave. In uh, 2010, uh, 56,000 exercise dies occurred during a 44-day heat wave in Russia. But in uh, 2019, there were, there were significantly fewer deaths in Europe compared with 2003 because of the uh, increased adaptation and the uh, people are more experienced. Third, extreme heat is on the rise. Globally, extreme temperature, in, uh, temperature events um, are increasing in their intensity, frequency, and duration. 475 million people were exposed to heat waves in two, uh, 2019 um, alone, and uh, the number was only around 50 uh, million in 2000. Uh, let's take a look at the a future distribution of global heat wave days and heat wave exposure. Uh, in all the scenarios, the number of heat wave days and exposure in the lower latitudes will increase in the most in the future. As for the heat related mortality, we can see from the left two maps that in 2000, uh, in 1990 to 2099, although temperature at a lower latitude will rise more slowly than those at higher latitudes, heat-related mortality will rise faster at lower latitudes. Um, the figure in the right shows that heat-related mortality of cities in Southeast Asia, South, Southern and Central Europe, South and uh, uh, Central America will increase most. Uh, from now on, I will introduce our indicators in the Global Countdown Report, which re related to heat. Uh, this indicator looks at the change in the length of heat waves for vulnerable 
populations. Here, uh, it, uh, it is defined as uh, those aged over uh, 65 years. Uh, the headline finding of this indicator is that a record of uh, 475 million additional exposures to heat wave affecting vulnerable populations were observed in 2019, representing some 2.9 billion additional days of heat waves experienced. Uh, this indicator is the heat related mortality. From uh, 2000 to 2018, heat related mortality in people older than two, uh, 65 years increased by 53.7% and in 2018 reached uh, 296,000 deaths globally. In Indonesia, the heat related mortality increased to over 3,000 in recent years. This figure shows the heat related mortality in grid. Uh, the ma majority of the heat related mortality occurred in Japan, East China, Northern India, and Central Europe. While in Indonesia, the uh, heat related mortality is also very high, which needs to be noticed by the public and the, uh, the government. At the national level, heat related mortality is the largest in China, India, Germany, the US, and Russia. Uh, the heat related mortality in Indonesia ranks the 14th uh, in 2018, uh, 18, 18, well, in, the, uh, in 2085 to 2100, uh, the heat related mortality in Indonesia will increase, uh, increase greatly to the eighth place. This indicator analyzed the change in labor capacity. Uh, rising temperatures were responsible for an excess of 100 billion potential work hour lost globally in 2019, compared with those lost in 2000, uh, with India's agriculture sector among the worst affected. Uh, Indonesia ranked the fifth and lost one, uh, 15 billion hour, hours in total. There are many ways to adapt to high temperatures, among which the use of air conditioning is the most direct and effective way to uh, greatly reduce indoor heat related health risks. risks. Uh, as we can see from the figure, the households with air conditioning, which is the red line in the middle, is increasing continuously from about 21% to over 32% uh, below 2000 between 2016 to 2018. The world's air conditioning stock continued to rise, further contributing to climate change, air pollution, peak electricity demand, and urban heat islands, while also conferring protection against heat-related illness. The measure of exposure to uh, urban, urban green space is a new indicator uh, for the 2020 uh, report. This indicator uses remote sensing of green uh, vegetation through the satellite-based normalized difference vegetation index, which measures the uh, reflectance signature of green plants by NDVI, um, providing an indicator of uh, the level of green coverage on the Earth's surface. Urban green uh, space is an important measure to reduce population exposure to heat. 9% of global urban uh, centers have had a very high or exceptionally high degree of green in uh, 2019, uh, and more than 156 million people were living in urban centers with concerningly low level of urban green space. Um, as exposure to extremes of heat and the uh, resulting health outcomes continue to rise, this uh, indicator places a monetary value on heat-related mortality. The monetized value of uh, global heat-related mortality increased from 0.23% uh, of gross world product 
in 2000 to 0.37% uh, in 2018. Uh, Europe was the worst affected in 2018 with the cost equal to the average uh, income of 11 million of its citizens and 1.2% of regional gross national income. Uh, rising temperatures make outdoor labor, uh, labor increasingly dif difficult, often resulting in public health and economic consequences for a wide range of occupations. By 2015, heat related uh, reduction in labor capacity result in earnings losses e uh, equivalent to an estimated 3.9% uh, to 5.9% of GDP in the lower to middle income countries tracked. As we can see from this figure, in Indonesia, the uh, earnings lost reached to $8 billion in 2015, which ranks the fifth among the world's countries. Um, and uh, the loss of labor capacity is mainly in our, uh, our, our, our great, um, agriculture sector. The, ser uh, the services sector's loss is the second. Media coverage on climate change and on public health acts as an important proxy and the driver of uh, political and uh, broader engagement. This indicator analyzes uh, the coverage and the content of health and climate change in key newspapers from around the world. We can see from the figure that although total coverage of climate change increased substantially from uh, uh, 2018 to 2019, the rise was even greater for coverage of health and climate change, which increased by uh, 96% during this period and has considerably increased from 2007 to 2019. Um, above are the indicators related to hate in the global report. From this slide, uh, please let me introduce our Asia Center briefly. Uh, in April 2020, the Lysan Countdown Asia Center was officially established, which was led by Professor Gong Peng, who is the Dean of the School of Science, Dean of the Department of Earth Science, uh, Earth System Sciences, Tsinghua University, and the global co-chair of the Lysan Countdown project. Asia Center brings together the, uh, the academic resources of first-class universities and research, research in institutions in China and abroad, integrated public health, environmental science, social science, economics, and other uh, discipline, uh, disciplines together, and aims to study the impact of climate change and its responses to human health, and also provide po policy suggestions to the government. The center's core output is the annual count, uh, countdown report for China or for Asia in the future, the first of which was published in December 2020 in the uh, Lancet Public Health. Here are the colleagues in our team. You can find the uh, detailed information on our website. Since China is the most popular country in the world and uh, is the world's largest emitter of carbon dioxide, China is, uh, China's actions on climate change will significantly improve the living environment and the physical and mental health of the public. So it is necessary to it is necessary and urgent to assess the aspects of China's climate change and health indicators. That's why we did this research and published this China Let's uh, Countdown report. Excuse me, Dr. Zhao, you only have five minutes left. Oh uh, yes. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, in this report, we invited 77 experts from 19 top uh, academic institutions in China and uh, internationally and uh, assessed 34 indicators related to climate change and health. Uh, this report is the first comprehensive tracking of climate change and its health impact in China. Uh, 
the pro um, provisional information was fully disclosed and uh, will update every year. There are two key findings of, of our China report. First, every province is affected, uh, each with its unique health threats and uh, targeted response strategies should be made accordingly. Second, impressive improvement have been made, but the gap remains large. This figure shows the increasing number of health risk indicators from climate change. And the second figure is the index of emergency uh, man management capacity of public health emergencies. The difference between provinces are huge. The third figure is the media coverage of health and the climate change in China. The red dots represents the, post, uh, the posts related to climate change, and the dark blue dots rep represents the climate change and the health uh, posts. So different, uh, different from the global results, there are very few mainstream media posts on climate change and the health. Here I listed the objectives of Asia Center, such as build regional collaborations with research institutions, develop national and uh, or uh, regional reports, engage in national level or regional level communications and policy engagement. Uh, as our center is still in the startup stage, we can only focus on the report this year, mm, but we hope we can establish a cooperation with Erlanga University in the next year and uh, to develop our Asian theater, uh, Asian theater together. This is the email um, of the Asia Center. And uh, of course, you can just contact with me and uh, all our colleagues directly. Thank you for listening. You can find out more information at our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and you can follow the Asia Center on WeChat, which is the uh, uh, QR uh, in the left bottom, uh, in the right bottom. Finally, thank you, uh, thank you to our two stra uh, strategic partners, the Lancet and the Wellcome Trust. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Zhao, for the insightful presentation. And we can conclude from the presentation that heat is a major health risk which kills and affects us economic wise. And in order to decrease its effects, we should build national and regional collaborations, develop national and regional reports, and produce further in depth studies. All right. And for the next session, I would let Mrs. Ernie to hand over the session. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Clara. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was the presentation from our speakers in session one and session two. We would like to thank to Miss Clara as the moderator in session one and two. Uh, we next move to session three and four. Please welcome our moderator, Ms. Evilioni. Okay, uh, she is a student from Department of Epidemiology, Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Airlangga. Uh, she has many achievements in academic and non-academic field. Uh, she has competent and also she has experience in or Sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, I will uh, read CV of Effie, uh, Miss Effie. We will create in session three and session four. Miss Effie is a student from Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Erlangga. Uh, she has competent in computer literacy and language skill. And also she has experience in so many organizations. 
and she got uh, so many achievements. For example, she got first place in health insurance festival competition, and also uh, she is finalist in public health competition in Universitas Negeri Jakarta. And also she got second place in Woman Hero 2 National Essay Competition. And also uh, she got top six speaker in English debate competition. And also she got first place in LIA Institute of Foreign Language Speech Competition. Okay, uh, to Miss Evilioni, uh, the next agenda, I will leave it to you as a moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ernie, for such a kind introduction. Once again, a very good morning from Surabaya, everyone. My name is Effie Leone. It is both a pleasure to participate in the panel with our speakers, our amazing speakers, and to welcome you to the third session. In this occasion, we would like to have an outstanding presentation from our prominent speaker, whom I believe shall enrich our insights regarding to climate change adaptation and mitigation. For all the participants, please be informed that later we will have a question and answer session. Please do not be hesitated to address your question in the question and answer section below by mentioning your name and your institution. Should you have any difficulties in addressing your question in English, do not be hesitated to write it down in Bahasa and we will try to translate it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me briefly introduce our third speaker. She is the head of Master of Environmental Health Program in Erlanga University and consistently active in local and state improvement of environmental health. I have the honor to invite Dr. Aziza. To Dr. Aziza, the time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Leonie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my title, Climate Spirits Program and uh, it's a program, climate change, adaptation, and mitigation, and health. Uh, before we make a presentation, let's uh, watch a video of the climate change, yeah? a climate college uh, program for the people of Indonesia, which contribute to climate, climate change, mitigation, and adaptation. Can you give me a uh, share, please? Yes, of course. Climate change is not likely or unlikely by human activity, which is caused to change the composition of plastic from globally and inside the little change in the variability of natural climate. It is observed that there is a comparable period of time. According to the WHO, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Aziza, uh, you, your video is doesn't uh, seem for us. Oh, I'm sorry. I said screen and then. Okay. Climate change is not directly or indirectly by human activity, which is caused to change in the composition of plastic from globally and residing. It is a change in the variability of natural climate that is observed over the comparable period of time. According to WHO, climate change needed closure and upcoming increase in practice of the last week reading this process and meeting foreign animals. It is a term the wide community of the the impact of climate change, not only the of the of climate change, 
Okay. Thank you everyone for watching and excuse me, uh, moderator. I have a uh, how many time? Again, ten minutes or five minutes? I want to uh, share my PowerPoint. Seven minutes. Seven minutes, Doctor Aziza. Five. Seven. Five minutes. Excuse seven minutes. Seven. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I want to share my uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, like uh, my video, maybe I want to explanation about the climate college program program in Indonesia. Maybe in another country, uh, the same have a program like this. This is a everyone uh, know about the global warming this trip, natural cycle and process some long-term change in local and global climates. Climate change is a change in the pattern of weather and related change in ocean, land, surface and ice occurring on time still of the cadre of uh, longer. This is a uh, global warming and climate change. Uh, how climate change could impact the world, impact of climate change, uh, like the flow, melting of the ice, do damage fertility and infrastructure, landslide, forest fire caused by a long drought and rising temperature. Yeah. Indonesia is a country vulnerable to the effect of climate change. We need to develop climate change adaptation action as a process to stay and build strategy to anticipate the impact of climate change. Climate change is a change in climate caused directly or directly by human activity that causes change in the composition of the atmosphere globally in addition to change in the natural climate variability. In Indonesia, we have the program Kampung Iklim, like the Kampung Iklim uh, Climate Village Program here of the river as a program is a national environment program managed by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry in order to increase the involvement of community and other stakeholders to strengthen adaptation capacity to the impact of climate change and reduce greenhouse gas emission and to provide recognition of adaptation and mitigation efforts that have been carried out that can improve the world to local level in accordance with regional conditions. Kampung Iklim is a location located in the lowest administrative area at the level of community or hamlet and the highest level of village or village or area whose community have made effort to adapt and mitigate climate change on going basis. At this uh, we have the program uh, food security and nutrition and climate change hurt to health yeah the impact of climate change disrupt to ecosystem and disruption to social system uh, like the uh, and health like change uh, of impact to health and therefore in Indonesia we have the program climate pilot program activity like this, so adaptation and mitigation. We have to action about that. Uh, how a uh, community, uh, rainwater stories, water absorption, design, terrace seating landscape. Yeah. We have the program in the, our Indonesia from Ministry of Environment in Indonesia. Program policy, a national program managed by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry in order to increase the involvement of the community and other stakeholders to strengthen adaptation capacity to the impact of climate change. We have the, any program adaptation, like um, the video, yeah, we have been watching uh, climate college program, mitigation, like risk management using renewable energy, uh, managed forest, increased vegetation, and agriculture. The rule of village government, community related services, and the private sector. And then we have a uh, like uh, 
um, trophy. Program doesn't stop at the trophy. We have the program in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Program activity will give a walk to all community that haven't taken action to adaptation and mitigation climate change. Like a program pratama, uh, program madia, program utama, program lestari, and program became a culture next time. But uh, until now, only for uh, for person uh, take a program lestari in Indonesia. And then uh, my government give a word to community give. Is a uh, like a uh, Sujono in the only one in the East Java. We have uh, an award yeah. from Chandi Sidorjo, another award from the Ministry of uh, Environment in the form the Trophy Proclaim Lesari, the highest level in the Proclaim category, the only and the first from East Java nationally. Is the fourth and there is proclaimed award that began in 2012 until now around eight, uh, eight years only for person with a trophy lesari. Like this uh, activity, activity climate change in the community, you can many. Example like the uh, emission for reduction, management solid and liquid waste, improvement or maintain vegetation cover, environmental friendly agriculture that reduce emission, and then uh, this uh, in Pasuruan climate uh, village program, like uh, we make a biopori. Yeah, Yopuri and then this Swiss uh, program from. Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor Azizah. Uh, yeah, you have two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi. Thank you very much, Dr. Aziza, for the insightful presentation. It's very amazing to know about the Climate Village program. I am very optimistic that it will strengthen our adaptation capacity of the communities to the impacts of climate change and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome our fourth speaker. Uh, he is the head uh, of lecturer in the Department of Nutritional Health in Faculty of Public Health at Langa University. Uh, Mr. Trias is an author of various articles and books and committed in many community empowerment that made him the most outstanding lecturer in Public Health University of Erlangga in 2018, and one of the most uh, top 500 researchers in science and technology index 2020. Mr. Trias Mahmudiono, Doctor of Philosophy, we are so pleased to have you here. The time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator Mbak Leoni. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor for me to share some of the uh, impact of climate change, especially experience in Indonesia related to my talk, uh, food security and uh, nutrition. So, in terms of climate change, uh, the previous speaker already stated that no country is immune to climate change. and uh, the potential for increasing energy consumption in Indonesia, which I still have a lot of problem related to malnutrition and currently related to stunting, is also hampered due to the uh, food availability that was decreased uh, in the recent years. Uh, 
This is the Indonesian rank related to Global Food Security Index. We are still more or less uh, on the uh, 60 and plus rank in the world. And given the fact that Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world, this is uh, kind of concerning related to uh, our food security in the future. If you look at the data in Indonesia related to climate change, the rainfall in Indonesia is uh, because we are in the archipelago between the monsoon type and equatorial type, we have a, a little bit of variation. And this is impacting the uh, farmers on how they going to uh, cultivate their land to uh, plant their crops and some of the impact already shown related to the increase in sea temperature in Indonesia from 1860 and in 2010. I think the uh, projection data also show a significant increase in sea temperature in Indonesia. So uh, this is aligned with, uh, with our speakers from the Lancet um, countdown have shown throughout the world that uh, in Indonesia, also we experience a uh, negative impact of climate change. And this is the projection based on the data in one of the districts in Malang, Jawa Timur, related to uh, the rise of temperate, uh, sea temperature. It's also increasing sharply in the uh, near future. So we need to mitigate this and we are glad that Indonesian government as shown by Dr. Aziza uh, examples in the program of Proclim and the Ministry of Environmental Health uh, and uh, Ministry of Health already have some um, what do you call, measures to decrease the uh, impact. However, if we see the impact of climate change in terms of food security, we see here Indonesia is a, uh, an archipelago with uh, thousands of islands and we see that the red uh, have a priority of uh, a risk for food security and the other with the blue one is uh, the risk for flood in Indonesia. So we have kind of, um, you know, discrepancy between areas. The, compact, uh, the impact of climate change could be in terms of uh, food uh, security when they have a semi-arid region and then drought is everywhere such as in eastern part of Nusa Tenggara, in some part of uh, Papua but in uh, Java Island and Bali and also in some part of Sumatra we see that a uh, flood when the rainy season come is also become a, a major problem that was caused by uh, the climate change and why the climate change have become this phenomenon because um, we live in one world that uh, the change of um, uh, climate and exposure to greenhouse gases in all over the world is going to be impact us as uh, one earth. Then what we have seen now is the extreme weather and also if we see the uh, what do you call uh, framework for malnutrition based on the uh, UNICEF, we see that malnutrition and child undernutrition is directly related to inadequate dietary intake and disease. However, this both direct causes was uh, driven by food security and among the impact, uh, uh, what we call the, the, the supporting factor to reduce uh, food insecurity is the livelihood asset that was decreased because of the climate change. Uh, people have less uh, production related to their crop and also uh, animal husbandry and also uh, fisheries. As our previous uh, speakers from the Lancet also said that our fish production is also decreased due to the increasing sea temperatures and coral reef are uh, uh, destroyed. And this is uh, one of the problem that link directly climate change to the uh, food security. So, uh, how to treat uh, malnutrition? We need to uh, accelerate uh, our mitigation, not only uh, specific nutrition intervention in, in terms of intake, food intake, but also 
in terms of the root cause how to provide with the adequate uh, production of uh, crops as well as uh, uh, livestock the social impact of climate change that we see in uh, many countries including indonesia one of which is social impact where um, it may be related to land conversion from uh, rice land to non-rice uh, field non-agriculture that is uh, quite difficult to uh, what do you call uh, regulate because uh, many of the citizen also wants to have uh, improved their uh, housing capacity but then uh, the government really need to push how to plan where the housing will be so the uh, fertile and also productive uh, rice field and other uh, crop area was not um, uh, transferred into the housing facilities also the changing in planting time it was uh, quite detrimental uh, we used to know when to plant which if we talk to the farmer indonesia have uh, two season oh, it's a rainy season already it start to plant but then it's not calm and then when it comes it's heavily rain and flood so it's, it's really unpredictable that's one of the social impact that we see in the uh, climate change and the correlation between food security and climate change uh, example could be direct because uh, uncertain rain and the length of planting season flood drought and so on this uh, occur uh, really affect food security in terms of production once again for the indirect price because the uh, stock are uh, decreased the price of food could be increased dramatically and this the government already have some uh, mitigation measure we have uh, we call it uh, sembako or the nine, uh, nine basic uh, food that was control uh, its prices in the market by the government. Example of climate change impact on food security and nutrition. Uh, it's all will going to affect the harvesting that used to be twice a year, but it could be decreased. Hence, in some nutrition and food science, we going to uh, develop rice that was uh, quite resilient to the changes and the need of what so we can have um, a rice plant in a different season this especially is going to be beneficial in area with uh, very uh, dry and also a semi-arid region such as in east nusa tenggara and some part of uh, papua as well and the area of field that harvesting will be decreased it needs a regulation from the government related to uh, urban planning and then the planning for uh, housing in indonesia i think right now it's growing related to um, uh, what you call uh, apartment housing but government also direct the planning for the housing of the poor if we have a uh, ground housing everybody will have uh, limited space and the conversion of uh, productive field could be uh, decreased in a, a very short period of time and then uh, one of the problem related to increased rain season related to flood and also the uh, fish and seafood uh, um, production or catching by our fishermen is also in its support i think we should have a very sustainable uh, fishing and farming uh, policy in Indonesia as well and anticipating for food security as food security is related to mainly about availability we have to map, uh, have a, a mapping about the priority for food production areas because in uh, each part of Indonesia the potential is is different and we have to uh, maximize the potential uh, area that we have in Indonesia not area is going to be not all area in Indonesia is going to be a rice production field uh, but it's also might be uh, better to be developed as a, a, a fish production or a sea fishing and others then land irrigation for inf infrastructure I, our government already have a heavy infrastructure uh, 
building in the last five years. We hope it's going to be uh, get better in the near future. Unfortunately, we hampered with uh, COVID-19. They also uh, could hinder our effort. And then the innovation about rice varieties uh, in some universities like uh, IPB University and University of Brawijaya already developed this uh, resistant uh, rice, uh, rice varieties that uh, could stand drought and also flood. Plus, uh, price stabilization, I think, with the uh, Bullock or the Center for uh, the uh, Rice uh, Supply in Indonesia is it's already making a good uh, progress in there. However, uh, we need to uh, protect the farmers because sometimes the, the price of rice in the farmer is, is quite low. And I think this uh, need uh, heavy change related to how farmers can be uh, uh, empowered to have uh, bargaining power to uh, maintain their uh, production and their economy. And the supporting system, mostly from the government and also early uh, information system on food security, it has been uh, taking place and it was tested during the COVID-19. We have uh, struggle a little bit in some part of area, but uh, we need still to uh, find the common ground to move forward together. I think that's what I can share with you all related to climate change and food security. Yes, we are not immune to this, and this is a challenge for us, not only our generation, maybe uh, our next generation. Hence, we need to uh, pay attention on how the landscape countdown has been tracking us the impact and we will study about the report that some of our colleagues already share with us and uh, we hope we can have uh, better planning based on this uh, data that we share with the Lancet countdown. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Mr. Trias for such an insightful presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the next session, I will invite Ms. Clara to open the question and answer sessions with the panelists. Please, Ms. Clara. Thank you, Effie. Um, for the first question, it's from Rifai Erdan Sanggamele from Manado State University Public Health Study Program in North of Sulawesi, Indonesia. The question is, in solving the problem of both infectious disease and non-communicable disease, during which the whole world government has been implemented both short-term and short-term policy and counter programs long-term, whether infectious disease is involved or not is necessarily a health technical problem, medic, medic, nutrition, still has to be looked at through the biotechnology review, environmental health, epidemiology growth, health promotion or social, economic and cultural differences. And so her treatment program was have to use multidisciplinary approaches, including sub communication, planning, cooperation, and support of the central government and area. So also monitoring or evaluation. According to the two administrators, how much do public health studies contribute to the continued growth of health in individual? Okay, I think uh, uh, I would like to answer the question. Maybe all the panelists can contribute later on. Uh, uh, what the program of public health, uh, public health studies can contribute related to this uh, problem in climate change. I think tremendously it's, it's quite uh, close to us, the problem of climate change that impacting the health of the community. First of all, as uh, public health professionals, we are equipped to have uh, uh, analysis capacity related to the data. And based on that data, we're going to have um, what do you call a campaign in terms of a direct promotion related to how, how to mitigate the impact of climate change as uh, Dr. Aziza already shown with the program in some of the uh, villages in Indonesia. But uh, further than that, also um, advocacy and collaboration with the government, NGO and other academic institution is a key in my opinion to uh, what we can do as a public health uh, professionals. 
So it's from uh, analysis, planning, and also advocacy to have a proper program for mitigation. Maybe uh, that's. All right. Thank you for the answer, Mr. Trias. Maybe the other panelists want to add the su substances of the answer. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll go to the second question. The question came from Budi Prati, and maybe uh, this will be addressed to all the panelists. How far that the correlation between the climate change impact to the food security and the GHG, uh, according to greenhouse gas? from uh, the food security activities? Maybe Mr. Trias can uh, answer this question first. Okay, thank you. Yes, I think in terms of uh, climate change, food security are heavily impacted. The first, the climate itself is changing. As we know, the uh, rise of the temperature, uh, we learned from uh, Professor Mainsam about uh, the decrease in uh, fish production and the damage in a coral reef. It's also part of uh, our uh, resources for uh, animal protein, a sea and then uh, with the fish and its omega uh, fatty acids, which are quite uh, instrumental in uh, child's development if we can have them to uh, eat this type of uh, food. And others are related to greenhouse gases. We know that uh, in developed country, such as in the US, one of the contributor for greenhouse gases is the manure and the, uh, the, our obsession related to uh, uh, red meat, you know, with the burgers and others. That's also need, we need uh, uh, maybe a constant effort of promoting a more sustainable eating pattern if we want to have uh, food security as well as to mitigate uh, climate change. Again, I think if we can perhaps choose a wiser choice, not 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 just like a becoming vegetarian or others, but perhaps have a less red meat, which are more contributing to greenhouse gases, for example, uh, changes into uh, fish intake, because Indonesia is an archipelago country that we have um, a lot of fish in our sea that might need to be um, promoted in terms of uh, consumption. Maybe our panel from uh, 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 the Lancet condon can uh, uh, share and highlight those related to uh, the question. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Trias. Uh, and thank you for the question and thank you, the moderator. Uh, so, well, uh, the question uh, concerns the correlation between GHG emissions and food security. Well, uh, the more fossil fuel we produce, uh, the more GHGs are emitted. The more GHGs, the more greenhouse uh, effect and greenhouse effect, global warming and climate change. So as uh, I mentioned in one of the slides, and that's one of the highlights of the 2020 report, the crop yield uh, has declined substantially over the last few decades as a result of increasing global temperature. And on the other hand, on the other side of the story in the oceans, as a result of increases in sea surface temperature and coral reef bleaching, so the fish production in oceans has declined substantially. If you ask any fisherman any, in any part of the world, at least in most of the parts mm. of the world, that uh, if, if they are uh, rather aged, maybe in their 50s, 60s, and if they can remember their fathers and grandfather and say how much they would fish when they were young, they would say they, there used to be, I mean, substantially more fish around here, but they catch less day by day, year, month by month, year by year, as a result of increasing sea surface temperature. And if you have a hobby of snorkeling around the reefs, which mm -hmm. I do, so you see that every year when you return to the same island, and the snorkel around the reefs, you see more coral reefs getting bleached mm. and they are dead already. One third of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, in Queensland, has already bleached. So fish cannot basically reproduce effectively if reefs are dead. So less catch, 
less fish for us to eat, and less omega-3 taken. Please remember that the fish you buy from the market and farm fish, if it's farm fish, it contains substantially lower amount of omega-3 content. And the main source of omega-3 content in your daily diet is, is the fish. Otherwise, the fish and chicken, both sources of protein. Yes, fish is a better source of protein in terms of quality. But the main reason that we consume fish is not the protein, is the omega-3 content, which is attributed to heart disease. So diet low in omega-3 content could result in uh, increased frequencies or prevalence of uh, heart disease or cardiovascular disease. So in Lent, we have less yields of crops and uh, in oceans, we have less, less fish to catch. And uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Zhao, mentioned about heat, heat waves and lower labor capacity. So food security is being compromised from different perspectives. When we have heat waves and outdoor activities, including farming, is being impacted adversely. So less labor uh, capacity, less labor productivity. As a result, food security is yeah. being compromised as well. So GHG emissions, and there is a question I would like to address concurrently with this one. Yeah. I, I, I'm reading it uh, uh, here on, on the question board. So what should we do actually? We should reduce our GHG emissions. That's the first thing we have to do. If we want to comply with Paris Agreement, we have to, we have to substantially reduce our GHG emissions and to do that, we have to decrease our dependence on fossil fuels. We have to enhance our renewable energy capacity and we have to improve our lifestyle as Professor Trias mentioned. For example, we don't need to go vegetarians if we don't like to, but we have to stay healthy, not just because of climate change, but yeah. because of our body, we have to reduce our red meat consumption to a standard level. Thank you, the moderator. Thank you. Thank you. And next for the third question from Saliza Mosh Elias. Since climate change shows effects on many aspects related to our life, be it health, economy, food security, how should we as individuals act toward this climate change so that we can positively contribute to the quality of life? Maybe Dr. Zhao would like to answer it. Yeah, sure. Uh, as Professor uh, Maysam just said, the first thing we, ha we, ha we can do uh, is to reduce the GHG emission. And uh, uh, to be detailed, the, I just <laughs> searched on the internet the 10 ways you can help reduce climate change. Um, every audience can do this too. Search on the internet and uh, find the uh, mm, recommended uh, ways. Uh, for example, we, we need to say no to plastics and uh, we need to use more green energies such like the sunlight, uh, the water, uh, electricities, uh, or the wind powers. Uh, the third way is to educate, educate people. Um, when people know more about climate change, people know how to deal with it. Uh, the fourth, maybe uh, we need to use uh, more public transportations, uh, such like the, uh, the buses, or uh, maybe you can ride bicycles instead of uh, the big uh, personal uh, cars. Yeah, and a signal to uh, fossil fuels. Eat, uh, the, the six is to eat the food rightly. Uh, as we uh, presented in our uh, report, we need to uh, eat more vegetables and uh, less red meat uh, to help to reduce the climate change. And also we need to stop chopping the forest uh, yeah. because we all know that, yeah, the forest uh, it, uh, help us to reduce the uh, carbon dioxide. dioxide. And, uh, 
yeah, uh, that's that's what I I found, and uh, um, as as the uh, the audience that it's related to every uh, individuals on the planet. We need to do everything we can to um, prevent the climate change, not only for the government but also for um, every uh, normal uh, people. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chow. Uh, maybe Prof. Mason or Mr. Trias would like to add something? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to add and share the experience that we have in the Universitas Erlanga, especially in Faculty of Public Health. We already uh, implement some measures related to uh, reducing uh, the plastic use as well as uh, the drinking water. So we have uh, the refill drinking waters and everybody need to bring their own tumbler. That's at the least that we can do. But again, this was um, uh, based on two ways. The first is about the policy that was um, uh, taken by our dean and the uh, uh, university to impose those uh, policy. And second is about the um, uh, compliance and knowledge related to uh, why such a small things to reduce uh, plastic uh, is matter for us. In bigger scale, we know that uh, in Surabaya as well, we have what we call Surabaya bus where we have to pay to ride the bus, the public transport using uh, uh, collected uh, plastic uh, or water bottle. This is a way to promote and to uh, prevent people from uh, doing uh, unnecessary thing and excess uh, plastic usage in, in Surabaya, especially in the Universitas as well. Yeah. All right, I would like to also add uh, a point here. Uh, uh, Dr. Zhao and Professor Trias uh, clearly mentioned what one can do, but what on top of all we can do is to be more demanding. Mm. Everybody, every citizen of the earth, of the planet earth has to be more demanding. We have to keep educating. We have to grab every single opportunity around us and try to educate, make campaigns, be proactive about climate change and the impacts yeah. on our future generation. So just don't turn your head and just say, it's none of my business. There are some other people's doing it. So not yes. only you should try to follow what Dr. Zhao said about the guidelines we have to pursue in order to individually mitigate climate change. Collectively, as yeah. residents of the earth, they have to hold hands shoulder by shoulder, and they have to yeah. be demanding nations. For example, in Southeast Asia, there is a culture of uh, burning uh, mm agricultural yeah. leftovers or even households uh, sometimes because of you know preventing dengue in the evening they, they burn and in many houses I have seen they keep burning agro residues in order to produce yeah. some smoke so we can educate there are better ways of controlling it we try to control dengue in many parts of the South East Asian region every household try to burn some agro residues in order to generate some smoke to traditionally control dengue. But at the same time, you see that it's not working. So dengue transmission capacity has increased as a result of uh, global temperature rise. So we have to keep educating our people. Some strategies not working, but they are actually uh, doing, uh, doing the opposite. So they are not helping. Yeah. So demanding nations create demanding governments. We cannot keep expecting our governments to act while we don't act. So let's say in, in your city, in your town, there is a population of 1 million people. If half a million today go on the Instagram, which is famous in Southeast Asia, and post about climate change, demand the government, demand the city and authorities, I assure you that tomorrow you'll see implementations. But when you demand otherwise, politicians, act otherwise yeah. thank you it was very comprehensive thank you so much professor mesa maybe dr aziza have an addition maybe to i will add, uh, 
Yeah. Maybe can I add again? Yes, okay. Mongo. Uh, 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 maybe from <laughs> yeah, departing uh from ourselves uh by doing from the start a small thing, managing waste from our own home, doing grading from home making compost from the waste of our kitchen so that uh, by doing start from yourself in each individual it's all the problem of climate change can be solved with the support of all us and the government private sector ngo and all level of society i think uh, this is from yourself in each individual thank you uh, patrias and uh, leody thank you for, dr aziza for such an insightful edition uh, due to the, the limit time, uh, we got to end this question and answer session. Uh, on behalf of Faculty of Public Health at Ranga University, we would like to say thank you for your participation and contribution. We do hope we could maintain the co good collaboration among Lancet Kandan and Ranga University near in the future. We, Effie Leone and Clara Cahyani, as the moderators for this event, We'll see you again in another occasion. Mrs. Ernie, please hand over the session. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Effie and Miss Clara. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was the presentation from our speaker uh, in session three and four and uh, session question and answer. Uh, I would like to thank to Miss Clara and Miss uh, Effie as moderator in session one until session four. Uh, okay, uh, to the participant, uh, you need to fill out the evaluation form, which uh, we have displayed the link in the chat column as a requirement to get an, a certificate. Make sure that your name and email that written on the evaluation form is correct, because we will send the certificate through the email. Participant are given five minutes from now to fill out the evaluation form. And also, uh, all material will be sent to the participant by email. Uh, maybe... Our Dean, Dr. Santi Martini can give a closing remark and thank our speakers of our today's uh, talk show session. Please, Bu Santi. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Trias. So, finally, we come to the end of this webinar, yeah? Dr. Trias. Thank you very much for especially our honorable speakers, Professor Meisam and also Dr. Zhu. Thank you very much uh, for your sharing your knowledge and your uh, experience related to climate change. And hopefully we can, hopefully we can develop uh, joint activity with you and also your institution, Professor Meisam and also Dr. Zhu. Uh, after this, uh, Dr. Trias can communicate uh, for the detailed activity with you both. And also thank you for Dr. Aziza for your sharing also for your experience, especially about problem. I think it's very, uh, what we call, it's very uh, what uh, insightful, yeah? Maybe very insightful for us that we, we can uh, we can uh, adopt the activity in our community. Yeah, yes. so uh, we can contribute to uh, to overcome any impact of uh, related to the climate change. And also for Dr. Trias, thank you very much for your time to to be a, what we call the second person. But because actually we have uh, Ibu Meta as our speaker, but uh, in the uh, 
uh, near of the date, uh, she, uh, she was unable to come. Yeah, so thank you very much for Dr. Trias to replace uh, Ibu Meta here. Uh, and, my pleasure, Pusanti. Uh, yeah, and also for the participant uh, coming not only from Indonesia, but I know uh, the participant also come from Malaysia, from India, from China, and also, uh, yeah, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, China, and India, yeah, Pak Trias? Yeah, yeah, also friend, Prof. Rubati also coming. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for Professor Rubati, our uh, professor, our... Uh, guest lecture, we have an activity in the September, I think, yeah, in the September, we have two, uh, two meeting, we, uh, two webinar as well, with Professor Robati from Diderot University, France, yeah. We hope that we can uh, develop uh, an activity, many activity, I think, related to uh, research or community service or uh, learning, uh, giving teaching or learning with our student and uh, also we can exchange uh, our student come to your university and uni your university can come to my university and also the teacher. Uh, uh, and for, for the participant, you can uh, put your name and your detailed information in the link so we can also contact you and develop the program with you as well. Once again, thank you very much for all. It's, uh, the webinar is very useful and many, many, uh, many information, many in, uh, useful information we get from this webinar. Thank you, Pa Trias, and also the committee. Uh, to handle this uh, webinar ka become running well yeah thank you and also for the moderator and also for the mc thank you very much yeah. uh, thank you dr santi for closing oh, remarks i forget uh, is it uh, uh, still here uh, the vice rector thank you also uh, the vice rector dr mita for opening uh, the webinar, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Santi, for closing remark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for your nice attention. Uh, finally, we come to end of this event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good Wa afternoon. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Mizan. Uh, my pleasure. Bye bye. bye. Everybody, bye. stay safe bye. and have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank Prof. you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Zhao. Thank you, also, Dr. Zhao. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank, thank you, Dr. Zhao. Thank you. Terima kasih, Bu Aziza. Oh, ini ada student kita. Naila, thank you very much for your coming as well. Uh, Naila is now in Hungary. Yeah, thank you, Naila. And I, 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 I see from early here. morning in Hungary, Bu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you also for Dr. Saliza from UPM and also Dr. Kal Panaya. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah I Dr. Kal Panaya from India. Our yes, uh, staff in bound nutrition department. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for all of the participants. Terima kasih ya, Evi. Terima kasih banyak, Bu Ya, yeah, Bu Ernie. Kami, Bu Santi. Panitia. Okay. Bu Santi. Terima kasih, Bu Ati. Terima kasih, Bu Ati. Terima kasih, Ye. Terima kasih, Pak Farid, Mas Dani, Mbak Dia, Mbak Tia, semuanya. Ya, sama-sama. Uh, saya langsung matikan, Pak. Ya, yeah, monggo. Yeah. Nanti yeah. untuk YouTube-nya bisa di ini sama Mas Dani ya, Pak? Oh, gitu. Iya, saya yeah. baru mau tanya. Ini okay. record-nya ada ya? Notulensi juga ada ya, Pak Triasa? Uh, ada. Ada, yeah.
Oke, okay, ya, yeah. ya, yeah, makasih, Matur Nuhun. Uh, Bu Datundia, jadi uh, nanti Ibu uh, isi saja uh, apa namanya uh, from evaluation, ya, yeah. nanti dari situ Ibu akan dikirimi uh, apa namanya uh, sertifikat dan juga uh, sertifikat dan juga link untuk mendownload materinya. Masih. Thank you, Prof. Ini saya biarkan. Yeah. I know you that you join us well in this webinar, Prof. Juliana. Thank you very much for your coming. Pak Farid, saya izin lift ya. Ya, Bu, monggo. Saya biarkan dulu, supaya mungkin barangkali ada yang mau mengisi dulu evaluasinya. Pak Farid, Pak Trias, Bu Santi, izin lift ya. Yes. Pak Farid, Pak Tria, saya dan Evi izin lift, nge, Pak. Ya, terima kasih, nge. Terima kasih, para Evi. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, silakan, Bu Kristin. Sudah saya kirim kembali. Pak Farid, saya izin duluan, Gih. Moga Pak Farid, Gih. Terima kasih sangat bantuannya, Gih. Gih. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. 